I'm not a superstar. I'm an ass kicker. I am Brock Lesnar. That's it. Hello everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel and I hope you're doing good. In today's video, the individual that we will be discussing about is none other than the former WWE and UFC superstar, Brock Lesnar. Many of us have been huge fans of Lesnar since our childhood days. The way he burst into the WWE, his in-ring dominance and ferocity, and also being witness to his amazing feats of strength inside and outside the ring. All of this made him one of the most famous WWE superstars and in-ring martial artists the world has ever seen. But why is the name Brock Lesnar such a huge thing even today? Who is Brock Lesnar the person? How does he live his life and why do people have this perception of him being such a reclusive figure? All of this will be revealed in our countdown today, so let's start with number 10, Career Highlights. Brock started wrestling during his college days, where he took part in several amateur wrestling tournaments. He was a regular on the wrestling circuit competing in collegiate wrestling events. He went on to win the NCAA championship in 2000. I gotta be very aggressive. I gotta be, uh, try to be as dominating as I can uh, on the mat. And uh, <clears throat> I think just be prepared for anything. He had then gained a good reputation of being a top wrestler in the state of Minnesota, which later earned him a contract with the WWE. Since then, he came on like a wrecking ball into the WWE, obliterating every opponent he faced inside the ring with his sheer power and resilience. He defeated the likes of Hulk Hogan, Kurt Angle, and The Big Show early on to stamp his authority in the WWE. Fans got to see a display of his raw strength, where he suplexed The Big Show from the top rope, which broke the ring down. It is still one of the most memorable and jaw-dropping moments in the history of the WWE. After months of dominance inside the ring, he would get his first title shot against The Rock for the Undisputed Championship at SummerSlam. The match lived up to the expectations of the fans, as it was a proper roller coaster where both Lesnar and The Rock fought hard inside the ring. Brock would beat The Rock by finishing him with his signature move, the F5, and would go on to be the youngest ever WWE Champion at 25 years of age, a record which still holds to this day. He would go on to achieve stardom amongst the fans as people started to put him in the same breath of The Rock, Triple H, Stone Cold, and other superstars. His other notable achievements in the WWE is the 2003 Royal Rumble and the King of the Ring tournament wins. His defeat against Goldberg in WrestleMania 20 was the last time fans got to see Lesnar in the WWE as he left the organization for new opportunities. He would then try his luck with the NFL, but it didn't turn out to be as successful as his previous endeavors. After several short stints in other organizations, he entered the world of MMA by competing in several fight promotions. Lesnar came into the spotlight once again by signing with the UFC in 2008. His debut against Frank Mir in UFC 81 ended in defeat as Lesnar was caught in a knee bar submission to which he tapped out in the first round. The manner of the defeat raised questions about Lesnar's credentials as an MMA fighter and he was very slow to react to the knee bar. But like before, the beast was not going to stop in its tracks until it had achieved its goal. He would earn significant victories on his road to the heavyweight title. He finally got his opportunity at UFC heavyweight gold against one of the greatest heavyweight champions of the UFC, Randy Couture. In the fight, both of them contested in grappling exchanges, where both were even, heading into the second round until Lesnar caught Couture with a right hand, following it with hammer fist to earn a second round TKO victory to become the UFC heavyweight champion. Mission accomplished for Lesnar, not really. He would then square up against former heavyweight champion and longtime foe Frank Mir for the defense of his heavyweight crown in UFC 100. Before the match, Mir sounded pretty confident of his skills and superior knowledge of MMA, also questioning Brock's lack of it and how it would prove to be his downfall heading into the fight. Lesnar, being his usual self, chose not to respond. He responded brilliantly inside the cage, though, as he utterly dominated Mir from start to finish, taking him down and landing heavy punches, which resulted in a second-round TKO victory for Brock. It also cemented Lesnar's status as one of the UFC pay-per-view stars as the event sold 1.3 million pay-per-views. Not only did he pack a punch in the cage, he did so on the numbers game as well. Brock would then leave the UFC for a year due to diverticulitis, where he almost died during the treatment. Speaking of his experience, Brock recalls, I was in a bad situation with not the right medical care, with not the right medical care that I was supposed to be getting in, you know, if I were to let it go any longer, it would have been very severe. 
people die from this. He went on to make a miraculous recovery and return to the UFC. His return turned out to be less than successful this time around as he suffered defeats against the likes of Cain Velasquez and Alistair Overeem. He would leave the UFC and rejoin the WWE in 2012. He would famously go on to end The Undertaker's undefeated streak in WrestleMania 30. He also became the WWE Universal Champion in his second stint in the WWE. He is the only person to win the UFC, WWE, NCAA, and IWGP Wrestling Championships. As usual, it was eat, sleep, conquer, repeat for the beast. Number 9. Fighter Salary his rise to the top culminated in him being one of the highest earners in the pro wrestling industry, putting him in the same bracket as that of his fellow superstars. In his second stint, he earned a base salary of $12 million, making him the highest paid athlete of the WWE. He also earned an impressive $2.5 million for his winning return to the UFC in 2016, where he faced heavyweight Mark Hunt in UFC 200, considering he was still contracted to the WWE at that time. The UFC knew Lesnar's power to attract the crowd and draw in huge pay-per-view numbers, due to which they got him to compete in the main card event even after being out of the sport for such a long time. Even in the money stakes, he came, he saw, and he conquered. Number 8. Sponsorships Similar to his accomplishments and earnings, Lesnar is pretty stacked when it comes to sponsorships. He is sponsored by numerous companies such as Jimmy John's The Fast Food Joint, Dimatized Nutrition, Jack Lynx, and Death Clutch Gym. During his UFC days, he was sponsored by Bud Light, whom he had jokingly poked fun at on more than one occasion, referring it to as Coors Light. One more question, then I'm going to drink a Coors Light. On a Bud Light. <laughs> you will be surprised to hear this, but Brock is the only superstar who was allowed to have his own sponsors while being employed by the WWE. A real testament to his superstar status and power. He is also sponsored by Case 3, the tracker company, staying true to his roots of being the ultimate farmer. If you've noticed, he is only associated with companies that advocate eating, bodybuilding, and farming, which happens to be his favorite hobbies and things, but you won't believe what his most favorite hobbies are. Number 7. Farming Farming is Lesnar's favorite hobby. His upbringings were very humble. As he grew up in a dairy farm in South Dakota, he often calls himself the ultimate farmer as he takes part in farming duties regularly when he is at home. In a commercial for Case 3, when asked about his love for farming, he says, I do it for relaxation, combining through the fields. Yes, that's the best they could get out of Brock. A man of few words indeed. It's my hobby. It's my relaxation, you know? I mean, people really wouldn't understand it and, and, and and, you know, I can go out and spend 10 hours in my tractor driving up and down a field. Number 6. Shooting and Hunting Not only is he an active farmer, Brock also likes to go on the hunt for the family meal. He likes to go into the woods on his own and measure his prey. Lesnar is also a professional handler of shotguns and rifles, where he usually shoots muskmelons and trash cans in his free time for target practice. That's where the practice comes in handy when he is hunting mule deer and whitetail bucks. And similar to his in-ring skills, Brock takes great pride in his shooting and hunting skills as well. Speaking to the outdoor life, he said that, I was just six or seven when I got my first gun, a Crossman air rifle. I pretty much wiped out the Blackbird population on the farm when I moved up to the Ruger. My dad and uncles all hunted rifle season for deer, although I wasn't old enough to carry one, I was able to go along. Hunting was our life. But his passion got him in some trouble in 2010 when he was charged with improper tagging of an animal while hunting in Canada, to which he pleaded guilty. He was fined $1,725 and handed a six-month suspension. But that hasn't deterred him from continuing his passion for hunting. Number 5. He Trains Like a Beast Lesnar is a proper freak when it comes to training for fight camps and keeping himself fit. He pays a lot of attention to his conditioning and strength training. His workout schedule is very intense, and the nature of the workouts is demanding. In an old video of his training camp for the Frank Mir rematch, one of his trainers says that he puts it all out during his workouts. When he's done, he's spent. So by the time fight night comes, he's at that peak. His coach also highlights the fact that his willingness to learn also helps him to be the fighter that he is inside the ring. Fun fact. Did you know that Brock has a private jet of his own, and the pilot of that jet lives in the basement of his house? In Canada. Who says Brock isn't friendly? Number 4. His Book and His Short Time in the Military 
In 2011, Brock took the surprising decision of sharing his life inside and outside the ring in his book, Death Clutch, My Story of Determination, Domination, and Survival. He premiered his book in The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, where he talked about the inspiration behind the book. The book details his life inside the ring, looking back at his successful career in the WWE and UFC, as well as his early life growing up as a kid, and his reasons for getting into the wrestling profession. Many would be surprised to hear this, but Brock was also given the opportunity to work with the US military at the age of 17. Brock wanted to be a part of the force, dealing with guns and explosives, but instead, he was offered a desk job in the military camp due to his colorblindness, which led to Brock leaving the military for greener pastures. Imagine a six foot three giant sitting behind the computer and not being fit enough to be part of the action. What was the US military thinking? Number three, film and television series. Brock has this reputation of being a serious and shy guy, but there have been instances in interviews where he sometimes comes across as a chill and decent guy to have a conversation with. His appearance in the Jimmy Fallon show proved he also has a humorous side to him. He was also featured in films such as The Fox Catcher, in short cameos, as well as television series such as The TUF-13, The Ultimate Fighter, where he was the coach of his team. In TUF, we got to see the supportive, calm, and friendly side of Brock, where he mentored the now UFC star Tony Ferguson to victory in the final of TUF. Moral of the story, Brock is a nice guy until you invade his private space, about which we will talk later in the countdown. Chicken salad, baby. Number two, cars and house. You might wonder that Brock might not be into cars after his destruction of the J&J's Cadillac in the WWE, but Brock has a huge collection of cars to his name. He owns four cars in total, the Mercedes-Benz, Alfa Romeo, Range Rover, and Jaguar. Obviously being the highest paid star of the WWE helps a lot. He is married to his wife Sable, who is a former WWE superstar. They have two kids named Turk and Duke. Brock is also the stepfather to Sable's daughter from her previous relationship. He also looks after his twin children, Luke and Maya Lynn, from his old fiance. Earlier on, they resided in Minnesota, where they lived in a lake house on 43 acres of land. The size of the lake house inside the living area was 3,247 square feet, which included four bedrooms, a kitchen, living room with a fireplace, shower, and bathtub. The luxurious lake house was bought for $7,083,500 and in 2014, Brock put the estate on sale. He held out for a price of $8,049,000 initially, but ultimately sold the house for $7,050,000. Somewhat of a loss-making proposition. They currently live in a farm in Saskatchewan, Canada. The cost of their current house is $2.1 million. Number 1. Brock Enjoys Solitude Brock in some quarters has always been thought of as a reclusive figure, but in reality, he is just a private person who likes to spend time with his family and his farm. There is also this feeling amongst fans and his peers that he doesn't like people. When asked about this in an interview, he said, I don't put myself out there to the fans and sell my private life to everybody. In today's day and age with the internet and the camera and the cell phones, I just like being old school, living in the woods and living my life. You could say Brock likes to live with his people and family and doesn't like his private space to be invaded. It is a rarity that a superstar as big as him chooses to live a solitary life rather than a glamorous one. Guess it is more down to the farm boy that still exists in him. So finally, after looking at the Beast's career achievements, lifestyle, his car and houses, his earnings and sponsorships, his net worth stands at a whopping $25 million making him one of the most famous male WWE and UFC superstars of the old and current era. And by this, we have come to the end of our video today. But before leaving, we would like to know, what are your views on Brock's way of living? What is your take on him choosing to live a private life as compared to a public one? What do you think about his hobbies in general? Which one would you want to try out? And what is the thing about Brock that inspires you the most? Let me know in the comments down below and don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to our channel. See you guys next time. I'm the beast and the best in the world.